phenomenal. We had our attorney from our association. We had a attorney from the Department of Real Estate, and we also had an attorney from CRMLS. So I am based out of California, and I work in the Orange County and LA area. And because of that, I pay lots of attention to all the things that are going on for buyers, sellers, and people who are looking to get into real estate. Whether you already have your real estate license or you're trying to get your real estate license, I am here to share all the stuff that's going on here in 2024. I love the fact that it's a voting year and it's going to be crazy. Things are changing. In Hi, Nikki. Things are changing in real estate like you cannot imagine. And the reason they're changing is because there's a lot of things happening with the buyers and the sellers. What's happening with the buyers is they're saying that their real estate agent didn't really tell them how they're getting paid. And a lot of times, if you don't tell them how they're getting paid, I mean, people ask me, they're like, I don't know why my family used somebody else. I've been telling them everything. I've been giving them good information. And unfortunately, you know, the next time I called them, they said, well, you know what, Sharon, if they were going to say it to me, they would never say this to me because I always tell them, that, you know, how we get paid. And so people don't tell or real estate agents don't tell their clients how they're getting paid if they are the buyer side. And the buyers are saying that they have no idea how their agent's getting paid. So if you're a new, I'm trying to get my real estate license. Are you, Nikki? I can tell you how to get your real estate license. What state are you in, Nikki? Tell me, are you in California? So we're interactive here because we are live. So let me know what state you are. And I will keep going with how you get paid. So what buyers have to understand is in the past and currently right now, what happens is when we take a listing, when a real estate agent takes a listing, they sit down and they talk to the seller and they tell the seller, you know, it's up to you. Everything is negotiable on how much our commission is. So, and then we explain to them that on the top line, we're going to put how much commission you're willing to pay. And we negotiate that commission. Oh, you're in Rialto. You're like down the street from me. Well, it's about an hour and a half or so. So let me finish this and then we'll talk. So, um, you know, the, the listing agent is the one that negotiates with the seller how much the commission's going to be. And, you know, currently right now, they talk to the seller about how much are you willing to help the buyers? You know, how much do you want to pay the buyer's agent? And it's up to the seller if and how much they want to pay the seller's the buyer's agent. Got it? So they explain that all to the seller. The seller makes a decision on how much they want to pay their agent and how much they want to pay the buyer's agent, okay? So the new thing that came out is the buyer's agreement. And the buyer's agreement explains to the buyer how the commission works. This happened because there's a lawsuit about it. So anytime there's a lawsuit that goes on, what happens is we have to figure out how to make it so it's best for the consumer and being best for the consumer is the best thing all around so that everybody understands who's getting paid and how it works. So Nikki wants to know how to get her license. Nikki, have you taken your three required classes? So there are three required classes that you have to take if you want to become a real estate agent. And the best thing that you could actually do is watch um, a lot of the videos on my YouTube that we're on right now, because on those videos, I do have videos that go into depth what you have to do to become a realtor. Um, I also have videos on my, okay, so you have your three classes. Yay. All right. So I don't have to tell you where to take those. All right. So what you need to do, Nikki, is go to, are you ready? It's really easy. www.passwithsharon.com. About five years ago, what are you waiting for? An invitation? Hello, Roger. Nikki, no, Nikki, what are you waiting for? Come on now, just take the darn test. So um, I was the same way. So you're Nikki, you're going to have to take a class again. You're going to have to take practice again. Now, I know this because people call me all the time. I am like the Ann Landers. You guys know who Ann Landers is. She was a famous person that you go to and ask relationship questions. But I was going to say that I'm the Ann Landers of real estate. Because people call me all the time and I pick it up. I'm like, this is Sharon. And they would scream in my ear or something like that. And I'm like, how can I help you? <laughs> and um, so questions I get all the time is, if I've already taken my classes, you can pass. Don't say you can't. You know why you can't pass? You want me to tell you, Nikki? Without even asking you a question, do you want me to tell you why you haven't passed yet? And now I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to, oh, you already did the practice again? I'm going to do the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. I'm doing that because, do you want me to tell you? Okay. Hey, Allie, how you doing? So, the reason you haven't passed yet, Nikki, is because that. I can't pass. If you say you can't pass, you are doing it to yourself. Stop the negative thoughts. Listen to Trina. Trina Wilson, you're super smart. No negative thoughts. I teach that in my class. You cannot do that. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. I'm already telling you. So do not think you can't pass. So hi there. It says RR range. Hi, how you doing? It's Alan. Alan, thanks for following me over here. So we're talking to people about how come they can't pass the real estate exam. I think you already have your license. You have to be positive, not just when you take your real estate test, but all the time. Like I manifest everything that happens in my life. And it says, long time, no see, Miss Sharon. I know I'm super busy. Hi, Carly, Carla. When is my next real estate class? Let me look. Um, if you go to passwithsharon.com, you'll see. But this is when I think it is. Arlene's not on here. I think she's still coming over. But this is when it was. All right. Yep. All because you took my class. That's awesome. So he passed my class. He passed the test because he took my class. So you go to www.passwithsharon.com and that will tell you when our classes are. We try to do it every other weekend and we try to do it where we do it for a week, Monday through Thursday from 6 p.m. to 930. And we do that Monday through Thursday. And then we try to do it again I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. We try to do it again on Saturday and then Sunday. So you can take it during the week. You get Friday off. Then you take it Saturday and Sunday. And then you go take the test and you pass. So um, you never want to stop because you don't want to beat up yourself. Because I have a question for you, my girl, Nikki, who did not pass yet. So the question I have for you is, what have you been studying? Okay. Uh, with our class, you can take our class more than once. You can take it up to three times without pain again. What you put out is what you get. Listen to Trina. Go, girl. Negativity gets you negativity. Positivity gets you positive vibes. This is life in general. Not only that, but everybody has energy. And one of my new agents is into energy and how it works and how to cleanse a house from the bad energy. And she's going to be working on a platform teaching people that. It's kind of like a whole different feng shui thing. And I can't learn it because it's just she, it took her three years to learn it all. But um, yeah, if you're negative, the negativeness is going to be all around you and you're not going to be able to pass. In fact, in my class, I tell my students, when you go to take the test, if there's a bunch of people waiting in line, and they're pacing back and forth going, oh my God, I didn't study the right stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not prepared for the test. Get away from those people because you're prepared. You know what you're doing. If you have my 62 pages and you take my class and you hear my stories, you'll pass. I had a girl just pass yesterday and she goes, Sharon, I heard your voice. Every time I got to a, a, a question I didn't know, I thought, Sharon, what what would Sharon do? And she said she literally heard me answering the questions for her. I don't know if that's cheating or not, hearing me talk to her in class. Hmm, that would be kind of a weird one, right? Mental telepathy, is that what it's, I can't say it. Anyway, so you guys, I wanted to come on and talk to you actually about all different other kinds of things. So what I'm gonna do, since I have all this information now, um, since I went to the legal panel, and some of you probably didn't get to go because I didn't announce it on YouTube, which president did more positive things for the real estate community, Trump or Biden? Okay, let me tell you this right now. I cannot answer political questions because I am currently the president of my association and they don't want me saying anything political. I'm supposed to say this. This is my practice line. In case any media people ask me a question, I'm supposed to say I cannot comment on that at this time. And that's my answer to your question. I'm really sorry, but I, you know, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. That's just how it is. So, you know, it is, thank you very much. It is um, an election year. And you guys are supposed to be voting. And even if you think that it's not important, that your vote's not important, and if you have people around you that think your vote's not important, have them listen to this. Because I got to tell you, before I got involved with the association, I was getting frustrating with the voting too. But you got to understand that right now there's, like, I think it's 2,412. It's some crazy number on... Um, 
how many different bills or acts that they're putting into place. And some of those are going to affect you. Like you don't even know. Like when somebody, these people sneak these little bills in, like one of the little bills that was sneaked in in 2020. So if you have a tenant, if you have a tenant, now some of you may be renters. I have nothing against renters. I love renters. I have 12 of them. Um, I love renters, okay? But renters who vote against tenant uh, landlords or shall I say property providers, the people that you're paying your rent to, if you see something that's against property owners and you vote against it, hi, it says, Sharon, I am a teacher. How to make, how, wait, I am teacher. How to make money. I don't know. What kind, what kind of teacher are you? If it has to do with real estate, I can show you how to make lots of money. But anyway, the thing is, you guys, um, you got to vote. I mean, he brought up the political thing. You got to vote. And there's one that's Proposition 13. Proposition 13, I got engaged. Oh, you got engaged? Oh, my God. Are you going to invite me to the wedding? I'll come. Hi, Carla. Ellie, where's the wedding and when? Congratulations. Can I bring Arlene as my plus one? We would totally make it so fun. Uh, yeah, but Arlene's really hard to get to go anywhere, so I'll come for sure. But um, I, I could come as your witness to the courthouse if you want. That would be fun. We could take pictures. It would be a blast. Anyways, I like to have fun. It's just kind of a thing I do. Um, but anyway, um, back to the voting thing. So Proposition 13, that was put into play to help homeowners so that the taxes didn't keep going up. So it stopped somewhere, okay? It did stop somewhere. And um, it made it so that they couldn't just keep adding taxes. Because when you get older, you don't make as much money and you can't pay your property taxes. And people literally lose their house because of property taxes. Ellie, depending on how many people you have, if you're anywhere near here, you can use my backyard. I have been dying to have a bride and groom use my backyard and take really good photos. Because, you know, I rent out my backyard as a venue. I had a Barbie party last year. We had a Kinson Yeti last year. I have like the funnest house ever. But anyway, back to Proposition 13. So I don't want to keep going off base. But, you know, with me, you know, you're going to learn anything all the time. So Proposition 13 right now, it's really hard for them to add taxes to us because it's there to protect homeowners. Okay. And so right now it takes like 70 percent or 72 percent of them to vote for the higher taxes but what they're what the what the new thing that they're trying to get homeowners to vote on people are going to say proposition 13 and they're going to go yeah no because what they're doing is they're trying to make less people can change your taxes so instead of somewhere around 72 percent it's only going to take 35 percent people to vote yes and raise our taxes we don't want that so let's go back to carla for a second it says, okay, so Ellie says she doesn't know where she's going to have her wedding. I told you, come over to my house. What are the requirements for um, investment loan? Ooh, it's a higher interest rate. Yes, it is. So what I teach, Carla, is I teach people not to get your investment property after you buy your home. What I teach people to do is called pyramiding. And this is what I did. I bought my condo. I waited till my condo went up in value, which was a few years. And when it went up in value, I got an equity line of credit out. I took the money from the condo and I bought a house. And then I sat on that house for about two years. And then I bought this house. Now, if I'm doing it like that, I'm getting owner-occupied loans. The rule is you should really stay in your property. They like to see two years minimum. But eight months will, as long as you move into that property, eight months will make it so that you intended, you didn't know what you intended to do. I bought the property. I got an owner-occupied loan. I moved in. I was there for eight months. Dang it. Property value went up. I want to take some equity out and buy another property because I needed a bigger property. This wasn't right for me. Um, but usually it does take, well, in this day and age, probably about a year to a year and a half to get enough equity to buy the next house. Um, because how it works is like this, Carla. With an investment loan, you need a minimum of 20 to 25% down. So you need a bigger down payment. If you do what I just told you, if you haven't already bought a home, if you bought a condo and it's small, you can buy a bigger condo and keep the smaller condo and rent it out. If you want more information on that, feel free to call me because I'm addicted to real estate and I will coach you through all your properties because I got to 12 and once I was at 12, the property management was getting a little difficult to me for me because I was a single mom raising a dirt bike racer. And so I decided that I'd look at the numbers. 
which property should I keep so that when I retire, which I'll never do, I won't have to work. And that's what you have to do is figure out your plan. Make a roadmap of what you want to do with your real estate career. Is it a real estate career or do you want to be an investor? And so with a real estate loan, not only is it a larger down payment, but if you're getting, if you're getting a loan for no points, zero points at let's say six and three quarters, if that's the conventional rate right now, which I'm pretty close, zero points, six and three quarters, then if you're doing an investment loan, it's going to be one and a half to two points for seven and three quarters. So it's usually 1% higher and 2% more, or one and a half points more and, a, and uh, at least 1% higher. A math teacher, Mr. Math teacher, you should learn how to do loans because doing loans is a math thing and it's really fun and it's very lucrative. Um, I did loans. Well, I still do them. I, I don't do them technically. I have two teams that do my loans for me. But um, I also taught, I was the number one instructor per the NMLS for loans. And let me tell you, fun job. And let's see, um, Ellie, we decided we were getting married in 2026. Well, I bet you anything, I'll still have my house in 2026. That's a long way away. But you know what? You'll get to know each other and love each other and Hopefully everything works out, right? All right, so what are we saying? So we can move in eight months and we can continue to pull money on it. Noted, yes. Do you think right now is an excellent time to do that? Well, I think last week was an excellent time to do that um, because interest rates were down. Um, interest rates do this. They go up and down like this. Now, because I am currently the president of the association I'm in, um, I get to go to all the meetings. And so it's really great because I get to be knowledgeable on more things than most real estate agents can dream about because I have to be at all the meetings. And um, what they're saying is the interest rates sometime around, not of course before the summer, but they're thinking after the summer on the fourth quarter that we're going to see lower interest rates, somewhere around six, maybe 5.875. Um, but we don't know because they just went up. So um, now's an excellent time to buy because I'm going to tell you something. If you guys are licensed real estate agents and you go to the CAR website, now I haven't tried to go there without being a licensed agent because I have a login and I'm licensed, but what you can do, there's two things that you can do that's phenomenal on the CAR.org website, California Association of Realtors.org website. Number one, the best thing ever. You can go on there, okay? You can go on there and you can put your client's information in there if they're low income and they need down payment assistance. You can put their in that you can put their information on there, their in their income information, where they want to buy, and um, press the little button. And there's over 400 down payment assistance programs that will pop up. And out of those, they will tell you which ones your client qualifies for. That's a pretty nifty tool. There's another tool on there that is renting versus buying. Let's talk about that for a second. Because you guys are all asking me, when should I buy? Yesterday. Not, not next year. Like, like my, um, my friend, where'd she go? That's getting married. Ellie, don't wait till 2026 to buy what you guys are going to live in. Because let me tell you something. In 2026, it's going to cost a whole lot more. Um, my ex-husband and I, I said ex, huh? My first husband, ex-husband number one. Um, we bought the property before we got married. I was not allowed to move in because that was 1980. Like, it was like 1980, okay? So we bought it. He moved in. My mom and dad said, don't you ever go over there. We find out you went over there. You're dead. Um, but anyway, um, we bought it and we started making payments on it. We bought it for a whopping $58,000. By the time I moved in, it was worth $80,000. So wasting time is wasting money, okay? So there's my instructor. Hello, hi, how you doing? Oh, and then I wanna to talk to Trina about doing loans. If you wanna do loans, um, I wanna say, the first, it's easier to, I mean, it's faster to get the license. It's definitely not easier. Number one, it's a 20 hour course. That's all you have to do. Go to the mortgage educators. You got that? The mortgage educators. You do your class online. It's 20 hours. Okay. After you take that class, you take a very difficult test. I'm told it's like the series seven test. When I took it, I had been in the business 30 years 
And I sat down to take the test and I went, what the hell are they asking me? And I did that for the first five questions. But because I skip around, because I do, I teach this in my class, how you move around on a test so that you can pass. So um, you go and you take that state exam and you'll be fine. I got to read this one before it goes up. But text me directly and I'll help you with that. It says, I was getting my real estate license. I passed but the, by the way, thank you. You're very welcome. Yay. Ellie, I love Miss Sharon. Aw, thank you. She's the best instructor anyone knows. You're great. And there's Arlene. And she said, the mortgage educators. I wasn't going to talk about the algorithm because I talk about that in my class and how to work around the algorithm. Um, most national tests, okay, most national tests for any kind of career is going to have an algorithm if they have a multiple choice test. And I teach how to pass that. Um, let's see, what else are you guys saying? It says, you guys don't have to tell me I'm great. I, I, I'm humble about that. And thank you very much. It is one of the best in, uh, in real estate. No matter why everybody talks a positive about her um, buzzing. Oh, that's cool. It's going all over the place. Well, then I need more followers. Can you guys do that? If you're not a follower, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and share because I want to make sure that I help not just real estate agents and students. I want to make sure I help you guys. I mean, also loan officers and buyers and sellers and everybody because real estate is the only way to wealth. Um, dream for all. Yeah, that's what it is. What are your thoughts on it? Hmm. It's not really the dream for all. It's a dream for 2,500 people. It's the dream for not very many. How about that? That's what they should call it. I'm sorry. That was really good, wasn't it? The dream for not very many. Um, so Cal Hafa, the reason I told you to go to the CAR website, God, this is going to be a long night, huh? Um, the reason I told you to go to the CAR website and look for the other possible down payment assistant programs is because dream for all is like I just said, the dream is a dream for some because what it is, is they'll give you 20%. Originally, I think it was up to 100,000. Now it's up to 120,000 and dream for all is only until the money runs out. Now, if they were smart, I passed the real estate test exam. Out. Oh, Trina, awesome. I'm glad you passed. Algorithm info when you take our class. Yep, that's what we say. Algorithm info in the class. Only available for 30 days, dream program. Um, hey, Arlene. Arlene's my business partner. Um, do you know anything? So is it only 30 days from when? Um, but it's $120,000. That's all they're going to give you and 20% down. So up to it's 20% down up to $120,000. And with that said, there's not that's not a lot of money when you figure out how many buyers are. Now the problem with the dream for all, let me explain this. Can you recommend a good place to get Botox and filler? You're funny, Carla. Yes, I can actually. Um, but I haven't done it in a long time. The place that I would go to is a person who just did my nose, but I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable with it because it's still swollen. He does fat transfer. He doesn't do Botox and filler. And I'm thinking about having the fat transfer because he says he can make me look like the picture I have when I was Mrs. California. Um, he said he can make me look better than when I was. So we'll see about that. So fat transfer lasts longer than Botox and any other kind of filler because fat does fat is a living tissue that they put into you. But this is a real estate channel. But I don't know. I might incorporate. I mean, I think I feel pretty good for 62 years old. Back to Allie. I'm not in California, though. Where the heck are you, Allie? And then it says April 1st. Oh, April 1st is when you have 30 days. Okay, so the problem, yes, I can fix it. May, uh, fix me up LA. Yes, okay, I can. So here's the thing. Um, if it's the same way it was last year, it was very unfair. Um, because what happened was, let me explain it when I say it was very, un very unfair. Um, okay, so... They didn't have the Dream for All program. All these people knew it was coming. So they went shopping. They got into escrow and they were qualified. They were qualified for their loan and they were in escrow. Okay. Um, so there Arlene's telling you the qualifications for Dream for All. 680 FICO score minimum. Single family residence manufactured must be a first time home buyer. We can talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about the escrow thing. So basically what happened was all these people found a house. They were qualified for their loan, which means they had to prove they had money. They had to prove that they could close the deal. Thank you, Arlene. We have um, our, our range is saying thank you to you. So um, they had to prove they qualified. So they're in escrow. And then they released the dream for 
all. When they release that, in order to get that money, you have to already have been in escrow. You can't, well, technically, you cannot reserve the money until you're in escrow. So all the people that got the money were the people that already got into escrow. And then all these people think, oh, I'm going to apply for this. It's already gone. It went in 11 days. But if those people were already qualified and they were already in escrow, I don't know. I think they should have just had to close with what they had because they were already qualified. So with that said, not really fair for the other people. I think that they should stop the 120% down and, you know, the 20% down. I think they really need to bring it down to 10% down. And then the buyer can bring in their 3% and go conventional, or they can go FHA with 3.5% down, or they can go VA with 0% down and use that money towards their closing costs. But honestly speaking, they should share it with more people and do 10% down. It would be much more beneficial for more people, right? Um, I want to work with math. I do not want money. I gotcha. Well, then maybe you should do a math job, maybe an analysis, maybe a real estate analysis person. How about that? Analyzing what's going to happen in different markets. I mean, if you like number and you like math, that's what I would do. Um, that would be a cool thing. It is really only for 2,500 buyers around this time. I know that's sad, right? Uh, Miss Sharon, what's my Instagram? That's a good one. It is. My Instagram is, let me think about it. It's Sharon Butler. I don't know if there's a dot in the butler, like Sharon dot butler. I don't think so. I think it's Sharon butler dot R-E pro stands for real estate pro. Got that? Um, I'm pretty sure if you put in Sharon butler and then real estate, you'll find me. And um, my, it says up to, there she goes. She goes up to 20%, not to exceed 150,000. So they raised it 30,000 since they told us what they're going to do. Um, must be registered for a voucher randomized drawing. That's no fun. It's a lottery. One buyer must be first generation buyer. Oh, that's BS. When you say first generation buyer, does that mean your parents cannot own a home? Yes, there is a DOT. Gotcha. Um, that makes it a lot harder to be the person who gets it. They're making it harder and harder, but that's because the money goes so fast. That's just how it is. So are you guys, you guys, we've been on for almost a half hour and I have given you so much phenomenal information. Please share it with your people to share it with their people to share it, to go ahead and um, subscribe because I'm not ever going to have crap on here. I'm always going to give you good information. So your parents can't own a home if you're a first time home buyer. What are they going to do next? Are they going to say, I don't know, your grandparents couldn't have owned a home? <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, it's getting... Yeah, parents cannot own a home. That's crazy. Wow, thanks for the info. Yeah, of course. So please share. Please try to help me out and get some more subscribers. Any up and, up and coming open houses? Did you not, you know, did you not know about the open house I had last weekend? I not only had an open house last weekend, but I had one on Tuesday and I had one last Friday. So on Friday, I had a neighborhood preview where we gave out wine and cheese and crackers and salami and all those kinds of meat. So where are you? Um, if you want to know about open houses, where are you? Um, you saw the house? Did you go see the house? And then on Saturday and Sunday, we had the open house. And then on Tuesday, we had the broker preview. And the brokers came in. And I got to tell you guys something, because some of you are real estate agents now. You guys have to ask, yes, Los Angeles, you have to ask for the contract. Asking for the contract is going to be how you are successful versus people who don't. I don't care if you're a real estate agent or a pole man. And I've told this story a couple times recently. The guy, I had 16 people come to give me a bid to put in my pool. And what happened was, I had a pool. It was an old, ugly pool. And I could have done a pool remodel. Yes, I could have. But my son, why did I listen to my son? Because he and I are business partners and we were flipping houses. And he said, Sharon, if I bring home a bobcat, can I pull out the pool? And I didn't think he was serious. And he came home with a bobcat and he took out all the concrete in my backyard. He took out all the grass in my backyard, everything, okay? And after he did that, the mortgage market, the market, the market crashed. So I was stuck with a backyard 
that was completely empty. I want to see what you're saying. My uncle wants to give his second condo to some random agent. When shall I choke him out? <laughs> Did he already give it to him? That's my question to you. You want to open my own real estate office. Oh, you want to open your own office? That's really cool. Do you have your broker's license yet? And how long have you had your license? Ellie, answer those two questions. All right, so back to your uncle. If it's not listed yet, where is it at? First, tell me where it's at, and then I'll tell you what to tell him. How about that? Okay. I'm going to get it somehow. I'm going to tell you how to get it. Where is it? Tell me where it is. I'm going to tell you how to get it. Three months. Wait, who said three months? Tahunga? That's LA County, right? Uh, can you tell me the name of your doctor? Yes, his name is Dr. Curtis Perry. Dr. Curtis Perry is in Whittier, California, and he does fat transfer. He will take fat out of your arm and put it in your face and make you look 20 years younger. It's pretty cool, right? All right. I've had my license for three short months. Well, that's why he doesn't want to give it to you. Um, all right. So what about your broker? Who do you have for a broker? I'm getting all your information. Who do you have for a broker? Come on. So we're trying to help you guys. We will help you any way we can. So um, one of the listings I have right now is because it was a new agent. I'm still studying for the real estate exam. Okay, center, Century 20. Are you at Century 21? Century 21. Um, here's the thing. What you want to do is get one of the more experienced agents or your broker. I would say I would do it but I don't want to steal you from your office. Um, or I could act as your coach and we can go in or you could go in with your broker or a more experienced agent and tell your uncle, look, I, I'm feeling like you're not comfortable with me doing your deal because I'm new. However, I have my broker who is going to help me every step of the way and your broker goes with you to the listing. Or I have this agent that I work with who has been doing this for 20 years and they're an agent in my office and we're a team and we're going to be able to help you better than anybody else because there's two of us. Or you can say, I have Sharon Butler as a coach. You can watch her online and you'll see her in person and she will help me every step of the way because she is my mentor and coach and you can pay me a mentor and coach fee. How about that? That's pretty cool, right? Um, Carla, did you get fat transfers before? No, I haven't done fat transfers before. Um, I've seen the pictures of what he can do. I'm seriously thinking about it. Um, maybe over here. I don't know. Um, but actually in here, I'm going to fill in my cheeks and look 20 years younger. But I won't look weird. I don't know. Um, I've only had him do my nose, but I've seen his pictures and I saw a lady that had it done. How old are you? You can't be that old. I remember how you said we must interview our brokers. Yes, you must. I wish I did more interviewing before picking the first one. Aw, I'm sorry. Are you still with the first one? I think I will work with you as a mentor. That would be great. Call me. Um, you know my phone number. It's all over the place. Plus, you took our class, so you know how to get us. Um, Arlene will say DM me, and I'll answer you. You guys, this is really fun. Um, so that'll be cool. And then it says, I won't get my license for a while in just, you're just starting your classes. Ellie, it doesn't take that long. Are you taking them at a community college or where are you taking your classes? Because if you're taking your classes at, through real estate trainers who I used to work for, um, Arlene and I are California real estate trainers and our website is passwithsharon.com. Okay, you guys got that clearly? I do not work for real estate trainers. I work for California real estate trainers, and it's Arlene and I and our staff, and we will get you past the real estate exam, okay? Now, if you're taking your classes right now, you could be taking them through anybody. Real estate trainers does the classes. I think one of the best ones is the Realty Institute, and then there's um, Kaplan. There's a lot of places. You should be able to get through all your classes in about, I want to say, seven and a half to nine weeks, seven and a half to nine weeks. If you take your real estate classes at a college, you have to take real estate principles before they'll allow you to take practice. So that right there is two semesters. 
Now, you might be able to take your elective when you're taking your practice class. So that's going to take you really long because you're doing it through a college. Some people do it through a college because they want to learn more and it's free. Or sometimes just because it's free, they want to go through there. Think about free and think about six or eight months that you did not do a real estate transaction because it took that long to get your license. Better to get your license sooner than later. So take it through one of those courses and get it done. In a, when I was teaching at real estate trainers, but where I'm not teaching now, I have to make that very clear. What happened is your first class was two and a half weeks. Then you took your second class, two and a half weeks. And then you took your third class, two and a half weeks. So that was seven and a half weeks. And then you were able to take your exam. It says, there's Roger, trust, security, show, competence. Um, are they are they laws? Trust, security, show, competence. Well, I would say, no, they're not laws. It's a fiduci It's part of your fiduciary duty. And we have a problem with that in our industry because a lot of people are not 100% honest. Now, what I have to say about that, you guys, is you're going to get yourself in trouble. You always have to tell the truth because if you don't tell the truth, it could be misleading the buyer or misleading the seller. And if you're misleading somebody, then you're going to get yourself in trouble with the law. Okay, you guys are good. You have more questions than the legal panel had today. All right, well, if I get my license, will you be my mentor? Of course I'll be your mentor. Okay, I only take three at a time. So you guys are getting a little bit overwhelming, but it looks like you're all at different times. So that's good. All right, we have a new person with questions. That's good. Is I think it looks like Kayla. Kata, Kay, I can't say your name. I suck with names. Thank God nobody on the legal panel today had a bad name or a hard name. Anyway, it's not a bad name. It's a hard name because I can't, plus I can barely see. You know, I am 62. Um, God, it's the weirdest thing to say that. I don't feel it. I've had my license for a while now, but I haven't done anything with it. What are you doing? What would you recommend? Well, why aren't you doing anything with it is my question. That's number one. And do you feel like you don't want to be a salesperson? Or what are you thinking? Because um, the first thing is you got to get out there. You got to get out there. Like I, I don't know what class it was, but I said that in a class. I said, I, it was probably I got my license. What do I do? So we have a video that's called that. I got my license. What do I do? It's on our website. Um, I think it's relatively affordable considering the fact that it's education to help you make money. Um, but anyway, I want to be a real estate broker. I'm so excited for Ellie. She's really um, really going for it. That's really cool. So back to you. Um, you haven't done anything with it yet. So we do have a class called I Got My License. What do I do? And it does have marketing things. But one of the things I said in that class is get out of your house, get get out of the area, you know, go to where you want to sell houses and go to networking events. Because I just mentioned that on Instagram, you guys want to go, if you weren't on the Instagram today, you want to go to the Instagram. There was a lot of good information on that Instagram. You guys aren't even letting me get to the questions because you got your own questions, which is great. Um, but I'm going to get on and answer questions all the time because this is, it's fun for me. So um, I hope it's fun for you guys and you're learning stuff. You've had your license. Um, decide what you want to do with it. Do you want to be a loan officer? Do you want to sell timeshares? Um, when the market crashed, you know what I did? I sold cemetery lots, not just because that's real property, right? I had so much fun working at the cemetery. Some people may not have so much fun, but I had fun. It was a good time. Um, now that I'm not working there, not so much fun. Okay, so we're back to Ellie. I want to be a broker. After two years, take the class again or study the materials with or without me. Watch our videos. And you just have to pass basically the same test. It's only, but you have 50 more questions and you have to get a 75%. But it's basically the same information. Next question, 62. Wow. Yeah, I do have good genes. My mom is 92 years old and everybody can't believe she's 92. Um, I took her to my plastic surgeon, <laughs> the one that did my nose. I took her there. And um, the, thing that, the thing that she and I want to get done is they do fat transfer and then they do a mask on your face and you have to wear the mask for 24 hours. And I'm claustrophobic, so thank you, but not. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, you gotta take care of yourself, you guys. Um, oh, Allie's leaving, bye Allie. Um, see me later, I'll see you later. So Carla, um, you got, you know, and all of you, um, I know there's only a few of you, but more people will watch this later and then we'll sign off because it's almost 40 minutes. Um, 
The thing you have to know, if I was to give, if somebody was to ask me what's the best advice I can give people, one of the best, wait, I got to read this before it goes away because sometimes the questions go away too fast. Yes, um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do sales, but also don't know anyone who will train me. Oh, yes, you do. You don't have to know anybody. You're breathing with a license. If you're breathing with a license, any broker that has a brain in their head will take you if you can interview somewhat decently. Um, sometimes um, Arlene and I have coached people on how to interview. Realize that they're not interviewing you, they're not interviewing you as much as you're interviewing them. You want to pick who you want. Um, I got my license. What do I do? We'll tell you all about the interviewing with the brokers and and how to look for somebody that will train you. And if you buy that, and you and you have questions. You know what? Arlene hates when I give away free stuff, but I'll coach you for a half hour for free. Um, she kills me when I say free. Um, but anyway, my phone is going out. That sucks. I got 30 letters in the mail um, asking to hang your license. Yeah, because you're breathing and you have a license. They want you. So you're interviewing them. They're not interviewing you. But you want a company that has some type of education. Where are you at? Put it in my comments because my phone's going to die and I got to shut it off. Um, usually I plug it in, but I wasn't that bright tonight. Get it bright tonight. Ah, and the light's going out. Um, good guess. Anyway, um, let us know in the comments if we've missed any questions that you have. I'll go to my comments. I'll answer them for you. Um, DM me, whatever it is to get a hold of me if you need to. We're here to help you guys. That's what we're here for. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. I had fun with you and I love that you guys are asking me a million questions and I'm gonna try to come on as much as I can. I can't promise anything because I'm taking care of my 82 year old mom. I'm gonna be with her Thursday and Friday and then I think I'm going to Hawaii on Saturday through Saturday and I'll be working 14 hour days if that happens. If it doesn't happen, I'll be here all the time. But anyway, have a great one. It says, is your number still the same? Yes, it is. So you can get a hold of me. Text me. All right. Have a great rest of your evening. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you. Bye. If I can shut it off. Can't find it now. Da -da 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 -da. There it is.